Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here, going over 6.03, Catalysts. As always, have your notes ready. So what is a catalyst? A catalyst is a chemical that helps reaction occur faster by providing an alternative route in the reaction that has a lower activation energy. The catalyst is not used up in the chemical reaction. So hit pause, copy that down, and then we're going to see how that applies to what we've learned. So in a previous lesson we talked about, let's say we have our reactants and they have how much energy? 150 joules and it needs to have 250 joules in this example in order to actually react. So that difference between where you started and how much energy you need to actually react is called the activation energy. Then when they react, they make that big glob, all the chemicals come together and we officially call that glob the transition state or the activated complex. And then in this case, energy is released when the products are formed. So if energy is released, what kind of reaction is that? Energy goes out, which is exothermic. So here's another example. Here we have some reactants. We still have an activation energy. And here we have a very large activation energy compared to this one. And then our products are made. What do you notice is different besides the chemicals used? What's different between this example and my first example? My products have more energy than my reactants. So the activation energy is still the highest point and they should all come together and that's our transition state or our activated complex. And our products have more energy than our reactants. So that means did energy go in or out? Energy went in and what kind of reaction would that be? Endothermic. All right, so for a reaction to happen, you have to have the extra energy to get to the top of the activation energy peak, and then you can produce your products. But what if you can't get enough energy to reach the activation energy? Okay, you just can't quite get all the way up as high as you need to go. Well, we have a solution for that. That solution is, if you can't make it up the hill, you find another route. If you can't get up the mountain, you build a tunnel through it. And so chemically speaking, that's where the catalyst comes in. The catalyst provides an alternative route for a chemical reaction to occur with a lower activation energy. So instead of the reactants having to go way up here to this energy level, instead we have the start of a new path because we have our catalyst there. It made a new pathway and it's saying, hey, let's go through the tunnel instead of going way up to the top of the mountain. Yep, we only need this much energy. And then you make the products. So you can see this is still endothermic because the products have more energy than the reactants. But instead of needing this high activation energy, we only needed this much activation energy. Not much more than what the products have. We had a new path and therefore we used our catalyst. So how much less energy was needed? So let's assume this black line here is what happens when you have your catalyst. So we have our reactants, and instead of going way up to 250 joules, how many joules did we only need? 200. So how much less energy did we need by using the catalyst? We needed 50 less joules, and then we made our products. Now if you notice, this picture is not different, and that's because the catalyst is a chemical, but it doesn't react. It does not come part of the transition state. It just kind of helps along, and then it's left over. So it doesn't become part of the products. It doesn't form anything new. So examples in real life. Most of the chemical reactions that occur in the human body and in other living things are high energy reactions that would occur slowly, if at all, without the catalyst provided by enzymes. Enzymes are a type of protein. Enzymes are your catalyst in the body. So for example, here's our enzyme, the gray Pac-Man looking circle. And we have our substrate, or in other words, our chemicals coming. They go into the active site. The enzyme changes shape slightly, and that allows for a different path, which, as you notice, I made two new products. So the enzyme lowers the activation energy by creating a different path, and it helps the reaction occur much more quickly. Specific examples, proteases. 
in your body would go to work and help break down the peptide bonds between the amino acids when you eat proteins such as in meat. Lactase breakdowns lactose. Ah, so you probably heard of lactose, right, in milk. And this picture, there you go, went off the screen there on me. It shows you that lactose, which is a sugar because it ends in ose, fits into lactase. Enzymes usually end in A-S-E. So lactose sugar fits in lactase enzyme, and then it makes it into glucose and galactose. So two different sugars. Well, what happens if a sucrose comes over to the lactase? Well, look, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit in there, and so it won't make a difference. It doesn't help that. Lactase only helps the breakdown of lactose. So if you're lactose intolerant, possibly having some issues with your lactase. Now you might have hydrogen peroxide in your house. Hydrogen peroxide usually comes in a brown bottle, and the reason for that is because sunlight would break it down even faster, breaking it down into hydrogen gas and water. If you do have hydrogen peroxide, it's bubbles, but you'll notice that if you leave the cap off or if it's really old, it's already broken down, right? It breaks down into water and hydrogen gas. And that takes a little while to happen. However, if we would add a catalyst, like, so if we'd add a catalyst, like some potassium here, look at how fast that reacts. That was basically instant, right? And catalysts don't always <laughs> make stuff react that much faster, but sometimes they do. So let's talk about another catalyst that all of us use, and that is a catalytic converter. The catalytic converter was mandated for all U.S. cars and trucks in 1975 to convert harmful pollutants into less harmful emissions before they left the exhaust system. So you know that your car gives off fumes, which obviously do not smell good, right? And they're not the best. However, what it actually produces is crazy poisonous. And so in the 70s, when there were so many more cars on the road, the government realized that, oh, we're going to be in major trouble if we don't take care of this. So they required all automobiles to have a catalytic converter. You might not even have known about this, but it's in every car you've ever been in. Chances are, unless you've been in some really old cars. So precious metals such as platinum, palladium, rhodium, or gold are used as the catalyst. Did you know? You have some platinum or gold sitting in your car? Yeah, inside the catalytic converter. So here's a brand new one, one that's not so new, and a diagram of one. And then we're going to look at this video and look a little bit at how it works. Because you're going to use cars probably your whole life, so it's important to know some things about how they work. And while I do know a little bit about cars, and I've been to some NASCAR events, I don't know enough to do this one off the top of my head, and so I am going to be using this video. So giving credit where credit is due. And they don't talk through it, they just have this music, so I'm just going to read through it so you can just watch the video. All right, so you have your automobile, and we're going to take a look inside. So we have the engine, the exhaust manifold, and then we're just going to look at this part the catalytic converter, the resonator, and the muffler. And we're going to go from there. And so inside your engine, what we're going to look at, here we have the piston going up and down, and hot gas along with sound waves is generated at the end of the exhaust stroke, which is this, and is sent to the exhaust manifold through the exhaust valve. So it makes noise, it makes some pollution, Sound waves and exhaust gas pass from the exhaust manifold to the catalytic converter through a pipe. So here's our catalytic converter. Hot exhaust gases are entering inside the catalytic converter. Due to partial combustion, meaning some of it is combusting, the gases entering inside the catalytic converter consist of a mixture of carbon monoxide. Now carbon monoxide is extremely dangerous because it's smaller than oxygen, which is O2, and your, it bonds inside your brain and inside your body much faster and it will kill you. There's unburned hydrocarbons and oxides of nitrogen called NOx, which are harmful to the environment and obviously very harmful to you as well, as in deadly. So that's why we want to need to take care of it. So now we're inside our catalytic converter. 
Inside the catalytic converter, it consists of two ceramic blocks with micro ducts, so little holes, and those micro ducts are going to have platinum and rhodium in one block, while platinum and palladium in the other block are going to act as our catalyst. So they are going to quickly, quickly, quickly cause these harmful molecules to be converted into something else. The toxic gas enter in the first ceramic block. So they're going in. Obviously, everything has to go through there, right? It's the pathway, the only path they have. So all these molecules are going inside, and as the gas enters inside, the nitrogen molecules are the first to react. The catalyst causes oxides of nitrogen, or NOx, to reform into nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. So they separate out, and that's because of the catalyst, which is the brown here, which they're not doing a great job of showing, because it kind of looks like they just magically separated. But the reason they separated is because you have the platinum, the rhodium, um, the polonium coming up later, some gold. All that stuff is going to force these to rearrange. It's going to help them rearrange very, very quickly. Think about how quickly exhaust comes out of your car. So now they're going into the second ceramic block. So again, there's micro ducts or little tiny holes. And this one usually has platinum and palladium. And again, there are some different catalysts we can use, but that's the one they're showing here. So now we have nitrogen gas, but we also have carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons. And we got that oxygen too. Remember the oxygen and nitrogen came from the NOx being broke down in the first part. So now we're inside the micro ducts, and we have all these molecules coming through. So some of these molecules, here's our O2, that's fine, leave it alone. Here's our N2, that's fine, leave it alone. We also have just some plain oxygen, and we want to wait for a carbon monoxide, which will be one yellow and one red molecule to come. Oh, there it is. All right, so watch what happens to this one. And there you go, just stole an oxygen from that O2. Now it's carbon dioxide gas, and now it is not nearly as harmful as when it was carbon monoxide gas. So you can see that all this, oh, and there, ooh, look at that one. That one was an unburned hydrocarbon. So they also react with, with the oxygen, and they form water and carbon dioxide gas. And again, this brown here has your catalyst. Your catalyst, for example, is your platinum. So the exhaust gas now becomes less toxic and comes out of the catalytic converter, and now you have carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and oxygen gas. But there's something else that came through too, and that's the sound waves. It's very loud when you have a car without a muffler. So the next part is the muffler. And the sound waves are going to go through the muffler in order to reduce it. So if you've ever heard a vehicle <laughs> without a muffler, you can tell. So the muffler's got different size chambers. And you have an expansion chamber with drilled holes. The gas with sound waves enters inside the muffler into the first compression chamber. So you can see that, oh, definitely those are the sound waves. Some of the waves come back through. More waves come out through the holes. The space for movement reduces, which causes friction. And that basically destroys your sound waves. You basically cancel them out. And so then you have the other chambers. So we're not going to go into more about the mufflers because the big thing I wanted you to see on this one was, of course, the catalyst and how it worked in your catalytic converter to make very poisonous gases into not quite so bad. All right. So then you can go ahead and work on your pre-quiz. And there's not going to be any questions on the muffler on your quiz, but again, just kind of interesting to know how some things about your car work because chemistry is everywhere. It's not just in your body like I talk about a lot, for examples. It's in the cars. It's in a lot of things that we use in today's society. All right. So if you'd like to watch the rest of it, you definitely can. Otherwise, go ahead and work on your pre-quiz.